Mansella, I'm from Tafwa and I love to listen to today FM, today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to today FM. My name is Mulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort, I love listening to today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News tonight. Government rejects Amnesty International's torture report. New site for bauxite mining in Vanua Levu. And pedestrian deaths concern Fiji police force. The government has rejected an Amnesty International report on torture, saying it's biased and does not reflect the true position in Fiji. The report released yesterday claims accountability for torture or other ill treatment is the exception rather than the rule and there is a lack of transparency. Edwin Nund reports. The report paints a scathing picture of torture, ill treatment and deaths of people at the hands of police and military personnel. Uh, However, Attorney General Ayaseret Kayum says Fiji has ratified the UN Convention Against Torture and local institutions and their leaders have made it clear that torture, assault and cruel, inhumane and degrading treatment of detainees will not be tolerated. He adds the Prime Minister and the Police Commissioner are both on the public record as having said that there is a policy of zero tolerance for torture which is being enforced with vigour. Sayed Kayum adds, it's no secret that during the turbulent times they had a problem with certain individuals taking the law into their own hands, but there has never been institutionalized torture and the days in which these individuals behaved with impunity are over. In fact, the record shows that successful prosecutions have been mounted and the perpetrators sentenced to lengthy jail terms. The minister says it's concerning that at no stage did the amnesty researcher contact the director of public prosecutions who could have provided clarity on a number of issues raised in the report. The report also states the Constitutional Officers Commission should appoint a commissioner of police and a commissioner of corrections who are civilians. Edwin Nant, FBC News. Zinfa Orem Exploration is expanding its bauxite mining operation in Vanua Levu. Eleanor Tarangai View reports the company has secured an additional special prospecting license for bauxite mining. Sinfa Orem Exploration has ceased its mining operations in Nawai Levumboa and moved here, the Naimbulu East Mine in Riketi. Mine manager Israel Indanganga says there is little work left at Nawai Levu. A few couple of uh, dozen tons there that are still to be taken for washing. Uh, otherwise, there's nothing left at Nawelevu South. Nawelevu is in two parts. We have a bit at Nawelevu North, and we are going to wash those materials there. Once the Nriketi washing plant is in full operation, then we will bring over the, what's it called, the materials from Nawelevu. The Naimbulu mine lies just beside the Nriketi Nambowalu Highway. It's not fully operational yet, but trucks are already dumping soil in stockpiles. There is about um, close to 400,000. Uh, cubic meters, uh, not all bauxite. Uh, there is about 30 to 35 percent of those material there is bauxite, and the rest is soil which has to go back to the. That is why the washing plant is there. Uh, those materials have to go through the washing plant, and the bauxite goes for export. Several sites in Vanuolevu have also been identified as having bauxite. Since for Arm Exploration has obtained a few special prospecting licenses for these sites. Well, we have a few other. Uh, SPLs, Special Prospecting License, we, uh, where we have identified bauxite, but at the moment we cannot say because we have to do a bit of uh, detail work in the areas. Earlier this year, the company exported 69,000 tons of bauxite to China. The next shipment of about 70,000 tons should be ready by January 2017. Eleanor Turangeville, FBC News. Eight children under the age of 10 have died in road accidents so far this year. 
Police Director Traffic SSP Mahesh Mishra says they've embarked on operations for the festive season. Three children who died in road accidents this year were less than five years old, while others were between six to ten years of age. SSP Mishra is urging parents to monitor the movements of their children as school holidays have started. They must not take any chance of uh, not supervising the children because it's an offence failing to supervise the children who are supposed to be under their custody and under their supervision. The road death toll for this year currently stands at 49 and 20 of those killed were pedestrians. Our major concern is uh, the inconsiderate pedestrians, especially crossing the road anyhow and also the, under the influence of alcohol or cover. That is another concern that we have and we would like to urge all our pedestrians that they must act responsibly and they must ensure that they must respect the, uh, the road rules and to ensure that uh, they are safe uh, whilst they are using the road. More than 35,000 drivers have been issued traffic infringement notices, of which more than 25,000 drivers were booked for speeding. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Immigration Department has confirmed a citizen of the United States was deported a week ago for breaching her residency permit. Immigration Director Major Nemani Vuniwanga says Karen Seaton yelled an obscenity at the President on November 30th. Major Vuniwanga says the unprovoked use of the F-word cannot be tolerated and Seaton was subsequently detained and escorted onto a plane bound for the U.S. He says her appearance before Parliamentary Committee had no bearing whatsoever on the circumstances of her deportation. Two men charged in connection with the possession of illicit drugs were released on bail by the Suva Magistrates Court this morning. Peter Fong and Solomon Mboini are both charged with two counts each of having illicit drugs, methamphetamine and marijuana in their possession. They have been bailed with two sureties and a bond of $500 each. The first accused has been ordered to surrender his passport and a stop departure has been imposed on him. The matter has been adjourned to 30th January. In the next couple of weeks, the government will have a discussion with hardware companies about their ability to supply the local markets with concrete blocks. Minister for Economy Aya Said Kayum says the five major suppliers aren't able to meet local demands, given they also export their products. However, one of the suppliers, Dials Quarries Limited, say they're on track and have met local demands. Savaira Tumboa has more. Minister for Economy Aya Syed Kayum says the concrete blocks are the only building material in short supply at the moment. He noted the main suppliers export blocks, but what is needed most is to fulfill local demands. There is unprecedented construction taking place in Fiji at the moment. Uh, so, as you know, with the tenders already uh, for a number of schools already being given out, they require concrete blocks. We have a lot of factories being built at the moment. We have. Uh, you know, hotels being built, so there's a lot of pressure on the supply side of things. And uh, we hope to talk to uh, some of the suppliers, the major suppliers, to see if they can, at least for the next few weeks, focus more on fulfilling the demands of the, of, of the local market. The exports are higher priced and therefore take priority over local sales. However, Dayal Squiris Limited Director Jai Dayal says their company is not exporting cement blocks overseas and are currently fulfilling the local orders. Basic Industries says they will wait for the outcome of the consultation with the government, while Vinod Patel says are unable to make media comments as they are binded by the contract under the Health for Homes initiative. According to Syed Kayum, Vinod Patel requires 1 million blocks to fulfill the current demand, while RC Manubai and Carpenters require 40,000 and 250,000 blocks respectively. In the wake of tropical cyclone Winston, the construction sector has been overwhelmed with the need for building materials. Sabera Tamboa, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, Fiji Police Force tightens expenditure. A new director at Fiji Higher Education Commission. Stay with us. My name is Siobhan. I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Mincy FM. Okay, Mitsi FM is number one in music. Mitsi FM is hot. I am Suresh Chand, 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 I am Suresh
Mirchi FM mujhe mast kar deti hai. I am Vilen from Zambula. Mirchi FM is for. My name is Rizwan Khan. Hi. And my name is Mohammad Sufyan. Baat to baat hai. And Mirchi FM is for. My name is Vishal Maharaj. I am a police in Dharmpur Chale Sabha ke master. Allah bless you to Mirchi FM. Welcome back. This is FBC News. The Fiji Police Force has restructured its expenditures, says Acting Police Commissioner Isikeli Lingairi. Lingairi says the force is now very strict with a reallocation of money to other projects. These comments were made while addressing the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defence on the Fiji Police Force 2014 annual report. Rachel Nuff has more. The Fiji Police Force was allocated a budget of $111.7 million in 2014. This was an increase of $19.5 million. We're very strict now. We tried to utilize the fund for the purpose it was approved for. Langari stressed this method is assisting the force improve its spending. We are not doing a lot of vehement now. We are stopping people. No. Work within what we have. While addressing the Parliamentary Standing Committee, Langari stressed the force was re-looking at its entire process of spending and preventing reallocation has really assisted them. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Year 10 examination results have been released to all schools and will be available for students from tomorrow. This year the pass rate is 45%, 3% more compared to 2015. Education Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says this is a good sign as it shows that there is improvement in the performance of more students following the reforms. Dr. Reddy says the pass rate in individual subjects have improved significantly. The results can also be obtained online through the website www.examresults.gov.fj. The Fiji Higher Education Commission today welcomed Linda Omua as its new director. Moore replaces the inaugural director, Salote Rambuka, who is retiring after 43 years of civil service. Sanyani Mboila has more. New Zealander Linda Omo was selected out of the top shortlisted candidates after the post was advertised both locally and abroad. FHEC chairperson Dr. Melika Sobi says the commission was delighted Omo took up the appointment. She comes with a wealth of experience in quality assurance in the higher education sector in New Zealand. Um, she's worked a lot with Pacific Island students there, um, really tracing their progress from high school all the way through to tertiary level. Mrs. Omo has also worked uh, extensively with uh, government agencies, with academia and also with the private sector. The new Fiji Higher Education Commission Director, Linda Omo, says she will work with relevant stakeholders to move the commission forward and take the sector to another level. Um, but I would like to um, take the opportunity really to thank um, Mrs. Salote Rumbuka for her contribution thus far in um, building a foundation for um, the Education Commission and the staff that's been here in the very early days in the setting out um, have established and created a huge um, already impact on the sector and I can only hope to come and advance this and uh, build upon it and create a greater stronger relationships with our stakeholders to better the economy. Omoa, who has family links in Fiji, commented that she is honoured to have been appointed to the role and looks forward to giving back to Fiji. Sainia Nimboila, ABC News. Cultural representatives from around the Pacific are in Fiji this week to review the regional strategy that aims to keep cultures well and truly alive. Facilitated by the Pacific community, the three-day workshop is considering the gains of the 2010 to 2020 strategy, which is half completed. Among the milestones are the development of national cultural strategies, which paved the way for the arts to thrive alongside major events like the Pacific Arts Festival. Deliberations are also focused on common challenges. Not enough funding, funding availability, the personnel, the capacity, and also the, um, the, the lack of coordination in various programs that we are doing. Culture is something very important that uh, with the given the situation where we have in the, the country and also the global influence and modernization that uh, we feel most of our culture will be lost. The reps will also discuss initiatives beyond 2020. Other than Fiji, there are delegates from New Caledonia, Wallace and Fortuna and Palau. 
Final touches are being made to Fiji's biggest Christmas tree set up by Vodafone Fiji in Mysuva Park. This is the second year Vodafone has beautified the park for the festive season, something that has taken them months to plan and prepare. A fun-filled event is planned from 6 p.m. tomorrow when President Chiochi Kondrote will flip a switch and light up the giant tree for the Christmas season. Just come early because it's bound to be a lot of people that's foot traffic. What we learned from last year, even about four hours before the actual event, there was already people that's lining up. So come early, bring your mats and bring your families. You can even bring your dinner if you want to, because it's going to be a very enjoyable event. Now to sports, here's Jamie with all the very latest. Nakazaki and good evening. Coming up in sports, PG7 team arrives in South Africa. And pools drawn for National Club Championship. This and more after the break. from uh, Matan. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sazakau from uh, Matukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Grove Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic music. I'm Saini Sakio from Kashmir Lotaka. I like Gold FM, the, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The Vodafone Fiji 7 side has reached South Africa for the second tournament of the Sevens World Series. The side will have its first training run later tonight in Cape Town before the announcement of the final 12 on Thursday. After a nine-hour flight from Dubai, the Fiji Sevens team landed safely in South Africa early this morning. Coach Nathan Yelidawanimbuka will give players two days to prove themselves before he names the final 12 for the Cape Town Sevens. We stole by, by Wednesday once Nathan goes through the team, uh, the stations this week. And uh, if the plan will be the same, we will attack this tournament. Uh, Got nothing to lose. Unlike Dubai, the players will have no distractions from training as there are no promotional engagements in Cape Town. Another official engagement here in South Africa, just uh, we'll have time off on Thursday so the boys can have a look around at the scenery view of Cape Town. Tabletop Olympic gold medal winning coach Ben Ryan will also be present in South Africa and step in as a technical advisor for the side. Yeah, ben uh, will also be in uh, Cape Town with uh, HSBC, so uh, he'll be heavily engaged in that, the promotion of rugby over here. You know, we'll be bumping into each other. Fiji had its worst finish in South Africa last year, winning plate and have to fight the odds to win the first seventh title of this season. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Twelve teams have been drawn in four pools for the Fiji Football Association's Vodafone National Club Championship. The winner of the championship will earn $4,500 on Monday. Vashnil Prasad with more. Last year's champions, a 4R electrical football club has been drawn in a tough pool with Suva Civic and Nandrongas Kulukulu in the national club championship. Bureta Football Club heads Pool B, while Talibunaita Series Agriculture Club and Lukia United are grouped together in Pool C. Pool D sees a western battle between the western teams with Nandi's Gandhi and Blues football clubs pulled with Lautokas FC United. We all together will have uh, 12 matches in, uh, in group stage and six matches will be played on Saturday and six matches will be played on Sunday, followed by semi-final and finals on, ma on Monday. Uh, yeah, the format is the winner from each group will uh, advance into the semi-finals and uh, the semi-final format will be winner group A versus winner group B and winner group C versus winner group D. Apart from the pool draws, major sponsor Vodafone handed $15,000 to the Fiji Football Association for the competition. A true reflection of our commitment, we continue to strengthen football at the grassroots level. And this will show in our commitment to come on board as the sponsors of the club, National Club Championship. The NCC will be held at the Bar Academy grounds from Saturday to Monday. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Fiji Junior Tribe lost to the Nauru Stars 32-14 in its first pool game of the AFL Under-15 Youth Oceania Cup at Albert Park in Suva today. 
The tournament is a trial for players from all participating teams to represent the Oceania region in the Under-16 Queensland States Championship next year. Meli Tavanga reports. After the win, the Nuhuran coach, Zach Tamaki, said they're here to defend the title. Yes, that is the plan. That's why we try to come here. Fiji are struggling to play football. It's not their spot, but yeah, they're doing well. EFL Fiji Development Officer Simon Highfield says silly mistakes cost them the game. It was a really tough contest. Um, Nauru is obviously a very, very good team and we competed. We actually had a, a very good second half. So it's good to see our, our boys improve throughout the week. And, um, you know, with two days of competition left, it can only get better. Highfield says they still have a high chance of claiming the title from the strong Nauru side. I mean, AFL is a national sport in Nauru, so they, they grow up playing AFL from a very young age, and our Fijian boys have only been playing for, you know, six months to a year, so, and without this sort of competitive nature, so it, 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 we're in with a very good shot. I mean, the experience they gain today from the game today, then they got two games on Thursday before the final on Friday, so yeah, for sure we're in with a good shot. All the teams will take tomorrow off. Fiji's next game is against Vanuatu on Thursday. The tournament ends Friday. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. The Fiji men's under-18 basketball team defeated Tahiti 65-46 to in its second pool match in the FIBA Oceania Championships at the Vodafone Arena in Suva today. Meanwhile, both Fiji teams lost its, open, lost its opening games, the men's side going down to Guam 51-64 to and the women's team losing to Samoa 26-47. to In other results, New Zealand thrashed Samoa 122-35 to in the men's competition and in the women's, Australia hammered Samoa 134-20. The Fiji women's team will play Tahiti at 8 tonight. That's it from Sports Tonight. Jackie's up next with business. Third party insurance is vital as the law protects victims in a motor vehicle accident. However, even though all motor vehicle owners are compelled by law to purchase a compulsory third party insurance, Fair compensation for accident victims is yet to be seen. As a result, the Consumer Council of Fiji will be organizing a seminar to understand why timely compensation is not made to the victims, whether the compensation amount is fair and adequate, and what reforms are needed to safeguard consumer interests. After a cooler than expected night today started off with morning showers in most areas of Fiji which later cleared to fine afternoon. Looking at the temperatures, Bar recorded the highest temperature at 34 degrees while Nandi and Lautoka followed at 33. For tomorrow, cloudy and breezy conditions are expected to prevail over the country with a chance of scattered showers. And we're looking further on to Thursday in our further outlook. It will be generally cloudy with a chance of rain at sea east to southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping the main stories for tonight, government rejects Amnesty International's torture report, new site for bauxite mining in Vanua Levu, and Fiji team arrives in South Africa ahead of Cape Town 7s. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. Now to our poll question, this week we are asking... Is Fiji capable of hosting the World 7 Series? To answer, visit our FBC website. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night. Nimbolevinat, <laughs> Na radio Fiji One, nandumoi vitin honga ni bienen.